Western students have a competitive race team. But it's not on land, it's on water. For over 35 years, sailors at Western have been among the highest performing collegiate racers in the nation. But it is more than a competitive sport. Sailing is a way of life. We are Western's competitive race team. So as a team, we practice and compete in FJs, uh, Flying Junior Sailboats, and we compete against other universities in our district. Sailing is a really fun sport. We're all like really close. We, you make some really good friends out of it. We're a really tight-knit team. We travel a lot. It's a really good sport to get into. The thing is, is that not a lot of people know how to sail and so it feels very unique to be able to get on a boat and just set up the sails and go. In the fall, we start out with a lot of new people and so we kind of work from there, teaching them the basics and then building up the bottom to build up the top as well, to be a more competitive as a whole. It's something that's very technical and it's something that's very challenging. It's uh, something where if you want to be a professional in it, you have to be doing it for at least 10 to 12 years at least. It's, it's quiet, and it's but when you combine that with racing, it's challenging also. So you can race, you can race cars, or you can, you know, run cross country. But when you mix the two, there, it's just a lot more fulfilling. I enjoy the combination of athleticism and strategy. It also gets your mind thinking about a lot of different factors. There's a lot of lines. There's a lot of different situations and. I don't think I've ever had two races that were exactly the same, so it's good if you're really up for challenge. It's like any other sort of racing, except there's no track, there's no set course. One of the biggest problems that people have with sailing is adjusting to changing conditions. So if the wind gets heavier or lighter, you know, some people don't adapt fast enough. Sometimes you'll get wind from, you know, shifting directions and making it a little bit difficult to sail as quickly in, in your ideal direction. There's so many minor things that you kind of pick up here and there and there's a lot of intricate details that um, if you kind of gloss over you won't be the best sailor that you could be. The best um, sailor can sail in any condition, so if you're able to sail in light wind, to have really heavy wind, to shifty wind, if you can sail in every single different type of condition, then you're a really great sailor. It's like you're playing chess with, you know, ten other boats and none of them are on your team, so it's all a big mental game and a lot of strategy and a lot of dynamics. The interesting thing about it is that you don't have to be extremely good, you don't have to be old, you don't have to be fit. You can be, you know, six years old and sail opties, or you can be 80 years old and sail catches, it doesn't matter, but it, anyone and any ability can sail. Just having that uh, drive to learn and drive to explore the sport uh, is what really makes a good team member and a good sailor mm -hmm. overall. As of right now, in our district, we are the best. Slides and, and pictures, and, and there's a there's always individuals, individual patients that just uh, really uh, that uh, <clears throat> have meant so much to me. And uh, I was giving a talk uh, an hour or two ago and showed a picture of this little little girl with club feet, and uh, wow. and uh, I'd fixed her foot and came back a year later, hoping it was going to be okay, and it was just beautiful. And uh, when I was going overseas, I I kept wondering why are these 